Hi there and welcome to Arduino Project 8, the Zoetrope. Uh, considering the luck I've been having with the cardboard cutouts that are provided with the Arduino, I don't think I'm going to be completing the circuit 100%. However, I'm going to do the circuit, do the actual uh, programming, and we're going to get the motor going. It's just not going to show the moving images themselves, but we're going to be using the, uh, you know, all the new components, the H-bridge, uh, and getting everything else working and then um, it's just a case of not using the cardboard cutouts at the very end. So let's get cracking with the actual circuit. Let's plug in our power first of all as usual and uh, get our positive and negative right here and plug those two into the ground and 5 volts as so. And we'll also plug in our, our 9 volt battery to this side positive and negative like so. I'm going to need some better um, ends to this cable um, because that's a little bit rickety and just keeps popping out any time I move it so uh, that's that. So the first thing let's actually get some switches on the go. So we'll put our first couple of switches uh, let's say here number one and we'll leave a little gap and then we'll put number two on like so uh, we'll connect the resistors to these switches, one kilo resistors, onto the other side of the board over here. So we'll do that at the base, number five, connect that to the uh, negative, the, ba the uh, ground. And we'll do the same with this resistor over here, so we get that out of the way. And then we'll connect the positives, the actual power, to these buttons and we'll connect the first one up at the top here like so and the second one to number seven like so as well uh, so we're getting along quite nicely now so we'll also connect these two to where should we connect these two to let's connect I'm just trying to decide which color wire to use because there's going to be lots of um, intermingling wires so let's connect these two to digital points four and five according to the diagram. So number five there can go to five up here like so and number four or number nine can go up to number four like so. So that's our buttons all wired up. So now we have uh, digital inputs Four and five, I've actually done, no I haven't, they're, they're correct, I thought I'd done five and six then. Four and five are for these two buttons here. So that's that. That's the first part sorted. Uh, now let's get our potentiometer and we'll build a potentiometer here. Just by plugging that into there like so, as we've done before. And we'll connect this to, where should we connect it? Around number 12. So we'll connect it to there. And we'll connect it all to the, oh, I didn't do that properly. Is that right? No, he wants to go into the other side of the board, doesn't he? So let's get next you to there. 12, 13 and 14. And why isn't that staying in? That's a bit dodgy, that potentiometer. Let me just see if the other one will look better in the box of joy. Is this going to stick a little bit better? No. It's a bit bouncy, but anyway. The connection should be fine, it's just a little bit bouncy. It's a little bit springy when I push down on it, but that should be fine. Put that potentiometer back. So uh, we've got our potentiometer there. Then we'll connect the top of it to the power. So port 12 there, row 12 to the power, and the bottom of it, which is row 14, will connect to the ground, like so. And then the middle of that will go to analog zero. So we'll bring this with a long wire and we'll bring this all the way round try and get out of the way of everything else and bring it in fact let's bring it underneath the power there as well so it's absolutely out of the way and connect that to analog zero it'll go in there we go so that is our potentiometer all connected uh, into analog zero and let's move that all the way around to the beginning like so now what's next? Uh, the next thing is our new IC, our new integrated circuit. So this is here, so we're going to connect this between rows 17, 18, 19 
and we're going to connect it to both edges of the board so it's going to be like so push that in there oh dear I've bent all the pins as well right let's push that in so that it is connected the pins bend out a little bit when you push it so I'll bend these pins back in and I want it to be this way up starting at number 19 there we go so we've got our integrated circuit our H bridge and now what does the H bridge need to be connected to so let's start with these red cables so the first thing in fact let's start with a yellow cable and bring the power in so we're going to bring the 5 volts and we're going to connect that to the very top right hand corner of the H bridge like so so that's our power and uh, our two grounds we'll do as well with the two smaller pins and they're going to be from 22 and 23 so they are going to go here like so to ground and 23 next to it as well very close and very snug there um, the next thing we want to do is connect uh, a number of digital ports to the H bridge so we're going to connect the top two to nine and three respectively so this top one here is going to go to nine which is there get out of the way cable like so and then the next one is going to go to digital port three like so uh, and then further down we're not going to connect the motor just yet but we'll connect the next one below that to digital port 2 which is this one that's going to go to digital port 2 like so uh, so that's all our digital ports done and then the other couple of the last couple of pieces of cabling we need are to connect the two grounds ground to ground and to also connect the far bottom left pin of the H bridge to the power across the other side so we'll connect that to the power over here and that should be it apart from the motor and the motor itself will connect between the two outstanding left hand ports which are here and here and that is our entire circuit all done I believe let's just double check everything so that is connected to there ah no there's a problem here so what I've done is I've put the potentiometer across both sides of the um, both sides of the breadboard so in fact let's take this green cable out for the analog in and let's wrap it around the potentiometer a little bit to go to the other side of the breadboard and plug it in at number 14 like so just so that we're not too crowded with the cables on the left hand side of the breadboard there that should sort it out and um, so we've got our two switches connected they look fine uh, top is power uh, bottom goes to digital outputs four and five which are good. The bottom right hand corner also goes to the resistors, the one kilo resistors. And then we've got our potentiometer where we've got power, analog zero and ground, which is all good. And then we've got our H bridge, which goes top right is the only one that's connected to the power. Yeah, that's correct. Nothing else is connected on the right hand side there. And then we've got digital ports nine and three, which is correct. Um, so we're not actually using 6, 7 or 8 which is absolutely correct then we've got um, our ground for our motor and then two grounds and then our power for our motor and then digital port 2 and then we've got power for the 9 volt and then we've got the negative to the negative and that is it so that's the circuit all completed uh, so we'll go over to the computer now and do a little bit of programming and then we'll come back Okay, so there's a fair amount of code to this one. Hmm. Yeah, quite a lot of code actually, 53 lines. Wow, uh, that's impressive for the Arduino, so let's get cracking on it straight away.
Okay, so that should be all the code that is written now. Let me just check there's no other little bits and bobs. No, that should be it. So what we're doing is we're initialising all of the constants. That is our digital inputs, digital outputs, uh, analog as well. Um, so that's all of there. And then we've got our actual switch states. So it looks like we're, instead of um, having a button that works, we're actually using the buttons as switches this time. So when you click a button, it's going to turn on, off, and then turn the direction of the motor on, off as well. Oh, to the direction of the motor clockwise, anti-clockwise, shall I say. Um, so that's the direction switch state and the previous direction switch state. Then we've got a motor enabled zero, uh, motor speed and motor direction, all start starting at zero. Uh, in the setup, we're enabling our control pins, output, output, output for the uh, three digital pins, control pin one and two and the enable pin. And also the direction switch pin is an input and the on-off switch pin is an input as well. So on-off switch pin and direction switch pin are the direction switch pin 4 and 5, so if I just have a look over here, yes, they are connected to the the two buttons on the board. Um, so that's what they are. Uh, then in our loop, we have our on-off switch state is equal to the digital, digital read of the on-off switch state pin. We also have a direction switch state as the digital read to the direction switch pin. And then, is there, is there meant to be a word state in there? Direction switch pin. Direction switch direction switch pin on off state on off switch state pin on off switch state switch pin I think that I've written something completely wrong here um, let me just check this on off switch state on off switch state switch pin hmm I've <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of an extra a little bit of extra text there don't really need it but yeah I think it'll, it should work uh, anyway what we're doing is we're reading in those two inputs there, setting the motor speed to be the analog read of the potentiometer pin. Uh, then if the on-off switch state is not equal to the previous on-off switch state, then we're setting the, well, then if the on-off switch state is high, then the motor enabled is equal to not motor enabled. So we're flipping that over and doing a similar thing with the uh, direction switch state. Then if the motor direction is one, um, the control pins basically flip over depending on the motor direction. If the motor enabled is one, then we're enabling the uh, analog right to the enable pin and giving it the motor speed, else we're setting the motor speed to zero basically. And that's about it. So let's try and upload this and see if there are any errors with the code. No, it looks like it's all fine. So let's switch back over to the camera now and uh, see if everything's working. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing then. So apparently, if I press these buttons, it should turn on the motor. The first one should turn on the motor. The second one should turn, change the direction of the motor. And then the potentiometer should change the speed. So let's... Yeah, there we go. So that's turning off and on the motor. And... I can tell in my hand that that's changing, changing direction because it's kind of twitching to one side. So let's then try the potentiometer. That's made it very, very slow. You can tell by the, the actual sound. It's gone very, very shallow, so... I can actually just very barely see the change in direction. In fact, let's get that little wooden piece out from before and plug this in, and that might be able to show us the direction of this a little bit better. Let's just plug that in there, like so. And if I turn that on, and just turn it up a tiny bit. So that is basically anti-clockwise. If I turn it off, change the direction, turn it on, I can see that that is now spinning clockwise. Very, very slowly, as slow as I can get it with the potentiometer. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, that it is actually spinning. I don't know if uh, you're able to make that out in the camera, which direction it's spinning, but it's definitely just spinning. I can change the speed of it. That's really, really cool. So there we go. We've got a switch which switches on and off. We've got a switch for the direction, which happens, which works when you whether it's on or off, but it also works when it's... Oh, there you go. Look at that. So I can switch direction halfway through. 
that's really cool. And then obviously the potentiometer. I can actually hear it breaking. Uh, not breaking as in making it broken, but breaking as in slowing down and then turning the other way. And that's all there is. So thank you very much for watching until next time. Bye bye now.